Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today you're going to watch us install a 2 inch lift kit supplied by Terra Firma. Now this vehicle is going to be a weird strange Spectre style so it's going to be quite interesting to see um, we've been commissioned to do the 2 inch lift kit and install the Spectre wheels and tyres. So pretty much a workshop video, we're going to show you guys how we do it, uh, what we do to install on a plus 2 inch lift kit on this Defender 110. So Leo's already unboxing everything, we've got top turrets, galvanised turret rings, polybush kit, We've got heavy duty suspension kit, and this defender up here is really, really heavy. It's got a thicker chassis. They've welded plates top and bottom because it used to be like a Western Power or an N Power vehicle. And having a look at the chassis, they've got big plates top and bottom round, all around the vehicle to strengthen it. I'm assuming because it's for the weight. It's registered as a Class 7 vehicle, so it's a heavy one, so we've gone for the heavy suspension, strong vehicle bushes, and we've gone for the full kit because we've gone for the 37 inch wheels and tyres. So, it's really interesting one. First thing you're going to see us do is strip down the vehicle, front end axle, we're going to get the front end built up and then we'll move to the back, all poly bushing throughout. Okay guys, so in this kit we have, this is a full two inch proper kit. So I know you can do a two inch lift kit where you just have the shocks and the springs and the brake lines of course. Um, this is that one step further. If you're fitting something like 37 inch wheels and tyres, you're going to be lifting the axle a little bit more, which is going to basically put the arms all out of whack, so put a bit more pressure on the bushes. So, We've just done the whole kit here, which means that this vehicle shouldn't go off-road, etc. It can handle everything, and this is all to set everything, all the chassis and frame, back into alignment with a two-inch kit and these wheels and tyres. So right through what we've got in the kit, we have our front cranked radius arms. Now, these are essentially what hold onto your axle on the front, stopping it basically to sort of wobbling left and right. And they've got a kink here, which is, you know, to put, put the bushes back in alignment, because if you can imagine, um, they want to be sitting somewhere like this. When you, when you lift a vehicle, they're going to be moving down like that. And of course, the bush on the back is going to start getting stretched. And you can wear them up faster. So this nice little bend on this thing, although you can't really see it, doesn't look like much, that bend there will basically put everything back into alignment. So that's our front cranked arms. And again, same with the rear. These are a little bit more because obviously the rear likes to step a bit more. So we've got that bend. The original factory ones go continue straight on. So essentially that will allow the bushes to sit nice and square against the chassis, stopping those bushes wear out. Now, We've got our new galvanised top turrets, these are nice and strong and don't, get, don't really need to replace these but it comes in the kit, really really nice, nice quality and I think these are the ones where you can change the shock without taking the turret off, you can sort of squeeze it through the side, so that's always handy and obviously don't clog with mud so it doesn't rot out, everything's always zinc coated, galvanised, whatever it is, electroplated Leon, there you go, I'm sure someone in the comments will put that in. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, front dislocation clothes, this is going to sit on here and it's going to go something something like that, and that's basically going to stop the springs falling out, so if this thing does, I don't believe it's going to be because this vehicle is going to be a coffee bar, but if it is to be used off-road, it means that when the, uh, you know, when the vehicle is stepping and the springs try to pop out of their cups, that will allow the spring to relocate into its original factory place. Again, same with the rear, they're going to sit on the rear, like that, with this plate on, pop up, and sit in there. So when the springs pop out, uh, they're going to go and relocate. Shock absorbers, heavy duty springs, and we've also got our red polybush kit. We chose chosen red because, as I mentioned earlier, the chassis on this one must weigh a ton at a, uh, what was it? Uh, at no, no, no liquids, what's that called? What's it called? Unladen, unladen, unladen. unladen yeah. sorry. Uh, unladen, the Vintag said that it's three and a half ton. So this is already a class seven vehicle, um, whereas a normal Land Rover of this size would probably be 2,750. So it weighs a lot more, so we've gone for the real heavy duty springs and stuff. And the size of these rear springs, ah, it's just mad really to be honest, they're super heavy duty. It's going to ride really tough, but heavy being well. heavy, it's going to be loaded up anyway. And it's a heavy vehicle, we've got heavy, this is a proper heavy setup on this one, which is going to be really nice. Because it just means if it ever is put to work, everything's uprated and it can just be, well, can be used properly. We've got the HD shocks as well. Everything's ready to go, and this, this kit actually comes with. Oh no! I was getting ready. <laughs> you said we were about the back. Front lower spring retaining plates. This keeps the front front axle lower spring in place, and it has a little bend in it so they can get round because these bolts through the centre, and the rear ones are there as well. So first thing we do is organise that mess. Strip down the front axle, and we can start installing our front arms. We have to press these bushes in. Some poly bushes are split. You can put them together, these ones aren't, that's not a problem. We've got to press, we'll take a moment to press, press them in, uh, but we'll do with that after we strip it down. So, let's strip. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, man. 
So yesterday we made an early start on this video and the vehicle also came in for full discs and pads, front and rear axle. Um, we stripped it down yesterday and Leon and Tom finished that off this morning, also putting on new disc guards. So um, what else did we do? We did disc and pads already. Oh yes, and this morning, bright and early, we had a tie fitter here and he came and fitted these trepidors, which were an absolute nightmare to fit, bless him. He really struggled, but um, let's just see you guys are up to date. Disc and pads already been done um, and now it's just basically suspension. So. Here we go. What's happened? Just top of the turret. Okay guys, so the front end's fully stripped down. Uh, it's pretty nice and easy. The only thing was stopping us, this one's actually got some like heavy juicy swivel guards, which are really cool. But they got in the way when we were trying to take them off, so obviously we will reassemble them, but um, they're the only sort of problem that we came across because you can't get a spanner in there. Um, arms are off, springs are off, turrets are off, and we're just going to press the new bushes into the arms, put the arms in whilst we're at a decent angle, and then we can put our two inch lift kit in the front and move to the back.
Okay guys, so it's a new day, and we pretty much have finished up on the front end. Everything is pretty much done, apart from the adjusting panel rod, which is gonna keep our axle central to the chassis. We haven't done the extended brake lines on the front, but for now, we're gonna jump on the rear, and we're gonna get those rear arms, rear dislocation cones, and heavy duty springs and shocks installed. So we're gonna jump on and get this done. So, we're replacing the rear half shafts for these solid fixed shafts here. What happens is you get a lot of play in the rear shaft and the flange there, and it creates a lot of noise and slack in the uh, transmission. So these are a permanent solution? These are a permanent solution, and the problem goes away and you never have to deal with it again, basically. Let's get them installed. So guys, we've just had to remove the rear anti-roll bar, and that is because with a two-inch lift, the anti-roll bar is gonna be right at the end of its travel. So if we try to dislocate this, go over a speed bump, something like that, the rear end's gonna feel really tight because it has no room to actually step around, especially if we've got the dislocation cones as well, they're gonna to be totally useless if the spring's compressed. So we've had to remove the rear anti-roll bar just so that this thing can move around and uh, well, do its job. So we've got to remove the front one now, and then we can actually fit the, wheel, fit the brake lines, and then it's the wheels. Okay, so the reason we're going to be fitting cranked rear trailing arms 
is because you can imagine, so this is with a two inch spring, you can see how much of the bush is actually being used. We've only got the equivalent of about, what would you say, half of that, 50% of the bush is being used. And of course that's gonna cause excessive wear. There's way too much strain on this part of the bush. This is an OEM bush, which is just gonna be causing, it's gonna ride really, you know, really badly. The idea with the rear radius arms is to keep the axle fixed at the rear. So the rear axle is not twisting or steering. You can imagine with a two inch lift, this is a big, big, big heavy vehicle. If you put a trailer on the back, that, those bushes are not gonna last because it's gonna be trying to squirm all over the place as it's trying to keep the axle rigid. So the idea with the, the crank rear trailing arm on a, on a, you know, a stronger bush is to basically keep this, this shape of the arm, the bush pressed into the chassis, all the bushes being used and utilized so that the vehicle can stay stabilized along with the upgraded upgrade bush. So definitely need to do it with a two inch lift that's gonna be worked and one of this kind of size and weight, especially with that thickened chassis, is gonna be really, really cool. So must, must, must with these, cause you can just see, it wouldn't go down the road too well the minute you put any weight in the vehicle, start, start squirming. And we want this vehicle to be riding really, really nice.
Okay guys, so that is our plus two inch kit fitted. Brake lines, cranked rear arms, cranked front arms, poly bush throughout, panel rod on the front adjustable, um, extended brake lines, springs, spring retainers, dislocation cones, top turrets, full kit on this one, and those huge 37 inch Maxi Strepper doors. Now this thing's off to the body shop, but it's looking absolutely savage as it is. 110s always look big when you lift them, and I think 110s, two inch lift and some big wheels and tyres just make them look absolutely insane. Trepidors just are so good. It just rolls. It just every time, it just makes you feel like a kid inside, just smile like a stupid child. <laughs> it's just mental, isn't it? It's absolutely we're done on the front, aren't we? Uh, guys. It's just outrageous, isn't it? If you, you saw this coming towards you in a town centre, my goodness. It's just ridiculous, isn't it? Wonderful. I mean, actually, height wise, six foot. Well, see what, see what it's like to drive. That is our two inch lift fully installed and uh, what a beast this thing is absolutely insane it looks huge and i just love how this thing the, the size of this thing is absolutely insane tell us what you guys think in the comments uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode